Hello everybody, The Quiet Atheist here, and welcome to another episode of A Story For You, where I read a story to you guys without offering my opinion. Now, first and foremost, before we get into anything regarding this video, I do want to let you guys know, as usual, that the article in its entirety will be provided in the description down below for everyone to take a look at, if you guys are interested. Sarah Green remembers feeling like she didn't belong in her own state after discovering that Tennessee's constitution bars people who don't believe in God from holding public office. It was one of the things that made me realize how unwelcome it could be for an atheist, especially in the South, Green said. It pretty much informed my decision to stay closeted, if you will, for almost 15 years. The 30-year-old Hermitage woman came out as an atheist almost a year ago and is adding her voice to a national push to take provisions that discriminate against the non-religious off the books. The effort is spearheaded by Openly Secular, which issued a report late last year finding that eight states, including Tennessee, had similar language in their constitutions. While a U.S. Supreme Court decision gives such provisions few teeth, openly secular advocates for their removal because they are demeaning and can be used as political fodder, according to Todd Stifel, chairman of the organization. They basically tell people that they're second-class citizens in their state, Stifel said. These are right there in the laws for everybody to read that our government doesn't like you. Tennessee's state constitution says that no person who denies the being of God or a future state of rewards and punishments shall hold any office in the civil department of this state. Heidi Weinberg, the executive director of the American Civil Liberties Union of Tennessee, said the provisions are old and unconstitutional. The Supreme Court makes it clear that residents cannot be prevented from holding office based on their faith or lack of it, she said. Their presence in the Constitution is troubling because it is a symbolic form of discrimination, Weinberg said. The provisions are called religious tests. Openly Secular's report cites the 1961 U.S. Supreme Court decision Torcaso v. Watkins, which ruled the U.S. Constitution prohibits states and the federal government from requiring any kind of religious test for eligibility to hold office. In addition to Tennessee, the Openly Secular Report also calls out provisions in the Arkansas, Maryland, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Texas constitutions for banning secular residents from certain civic roles such as serving on a jury, holding office, and testifying in court. Pennsylvania's constitution specifically gives protections to those who believe in God. The discriminatory nature of the language is at the heart of the issue. The mission Openly Secular, a project by four secular organizations, centers on ending discrimination and increasing the acceptance of non-religious by taking a page from the gay rights movement and urging people to be open about their beliefs. We need to be treated fairly just like anyone else, Stifle said. If you're a student or a young adult reading your state constitution for the first time, there is no asterisk in there saying this is unconstitutional. It just says you're not allowed to hold public office. Green stumbled across the ban in high school while studying the state constitution at the same time Green, who grew up in a family with Southern Baptist beliefs, was coming to the realization that she did not believe in a God. You feel rejected for something that on a certain level that you cannot help, Green said. Religious test provisions in the United States date back to the early formation of the country, said James Hudnut Bumler, an American religious history professor at Vanderbilt Divinity School. In England, the test stemmed from fears that someone would turn the reins of the country over to an ecclesiastical power, Hudnut Bumler said. After the American Revolution, the U.S. forebearers wanted to ensure that those in public office were truthful and swearing on the Bible was seen as a layer of affirmation, he said. That's where we got the habit from, Hudnut Bumler said. It's a good housekeeping seal of truthfulness that you were some kind of church member or believer in general Christianity. Hudnut Bumler thinks these feelings persist and pointed out that one of the hypothetical scenarios religious and political science professors debate is whether an atheist could be elected president of the United States. A 2012 Gallup poll found that Americans were more accepting of candidates from various backgrounds but would have a harder time supporting atheists. 
but a majority of the Americans say they would still vote for such a candidate. A 2014 Pew Research study found that Americans view atheists more coddly than most of the religious groups. The survey asked about including Jews, Catholics, Evangelical Christians, Buddhists, Hindus, and Mormons. I think the answer right now is not now, Hudnut Bumler said. It means that there is still a basic sense amongst the group of citizens who are religious that people who are religious are more trustworthy even if it's not your own religion. The Tennessee Constitution even has its own religious test provision that no political or religious test other than an oath to support the Constitution of the United States and of this state shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under this state. But the state governing document also lists three disqualifications including barring those who do not believe in God from office, as well as prohibiting ministers and priests from serving in the state legislature. The third disqualification deals with duels. Weinberg said some members serving in the state legislature are clergy members, which also is technically prohibited in the state constitution. Although both provisions are unconstitutional, removing them means the, constitu the Constitution excuse me, would need to be amended, which is no small task. It's frustrating to see that language there, but you also have to recognize that the process to take the provisions out is very cumbersome and costly, Weinberg said. Hudnut Bumler said it can be politically risky for lawmakers to try and remove the provisions. Whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, you don't want conservative Christians to be mad at you for removing religious language from your state constitution or laws, Hudnut Bumler said. So they have very little interest in striking down what appears to be God-friendly laws. Stifle has no illusions that change would happen in the states anytime soon, but Openly Secular will continue to encourage people to lobby their legislators in Tennessee, Green said, her focus is to bring together and mobilize the state's non-believers so they have enough clout to make an impact on the state laws.